in this session, we want to discuss permissions on files and folders on the network. We're looking at NTF permissions and share permissions. When you set permissions on a file, a folder, a printer, you are allowing the user or group access to that resource. If you're going to set share permissions, share permissions only matter when you have resources that are being accessed over the network. If you set share permissions on a local user, when that user is not connected to the network, then those permissions are ignored. So share permissions are for users that are accessing resources over the network. On the other hand, NTFS permissions can be used whether you access resources over the network or whether you access resources locally. It is best practice to assign permissions to a group rather than a user. And the reason for that is if I, for example, have a sales data folder and I give permission to a group to access that folder. If someone new comes into the office and joins the sale group, then all I have to do is to put that user, add that user to the sales group. Instead of going and giving permissions to that user for the folder. So it's the best practice then to assign permissions to the group. Even if you have one person that you want to assign permissions to, it's better to put that person in a group and then assign permissions to the group. Now we want to look at the NTFS permissions. There are two types of permissions again, shared and NTFS. To access the NTFS permissions, we want to go to the properties of that folder and click on the security tab. When you click on the security tab, it shows you the NTFS permissions, which we call file and folder permissions. The permissions that we see here are full control, modify, read and execute, list folder contents, read and write permission. Now let's explore those permissions. Let's look at full control. If you give a user or group full control, it means that the user can add items, change items, move and delete items for the folder. The user also will be able to add and remove permissions on the folder as well as subfolders in that folder. So you want to be careful how you are giving out full control because if a person has full control, it means the person can remove the permissions that are on the folder. If you're dealing with a file for full control, the user has full control to the file the user can change that file, the user can move it, he can delete it, and he can also add and remove permissions for the file. Then you come to the modify permission. The modify permission is a combination of read and write. If you give a person modify permission on a folder or file, that person is going to be able to delete files within the folder. And the person will also be able to view the contents of any subfolders within that folder. For a file, the user is able to modify the contents of that file. So modify is a little bit less than full control. Full control, you can do everything. 
if mod but modify the person who has modified permissions that person cannot remove permissions on the folder or any subfolders within that folder next we have read and execute for the folder if you give a person read and execute permission it means that that person is allowed to read the contents of files within that folder or execute programs inside the folder so if there's a exe um, file or program in the folder the user is able to run that file for the file the user is able to read the contents of the file and also run that program then we have list folder contents this permission allows the user to view the contents of the selected folder the user is not able to read the contents of the file all the user is able to do is to open the folder and view the different files names that is that's in the folder but they can't read the file they can't read the information in the file that is or they can't run a exe file if that file is in the folder for a file this list contents is not applicable then you have the read permission for the folder, the user can read the contents of the folder. For file, the user can read the contents of a file if that user is given read permission. Write permission. If you give a user write permission or on a file or a folder, that user can create files and that user can create folders. This does not grant the user with that permission ability to read any existing information all the user can do is create files and folders for the file itself the user can create a file let's look at an example of giving permissions here we have group a and group b we have john brown who is a member of group a but john brown is also a member of group b and we're looking here at the ntfs permissions for group a the permission that group a has on this folder here is read and execute that's the ntfs permission and group b was given the permission right, the NTFS permission right. Now, if John is a member of both of these groups, what is John's effective permission on that group? We have to figure that out. Now, remember we said that John belong to group A and group B. Both of these groups have different permissions. The rule of thumb is, is that if the person belongs to more than one group, what we want to do is to combine the permissions, the cumulative. For example, if group A has read and execute and group B has write, you have to add those two permissions together. And the permission that will win is the one that is the least restrictive. So we have read and execute and write. And out of the two of those, the one that is the least restrictive is the write permission. So write is the permission that will win. Write can do more than read and execute, which means that it's the least restrictive. Now, let's turn our attention to sharing the share permissions. Here is the property of a shared folder. 
you see here you can click on sharing then you click on advanced sharing and the dialog box will come up you will give a tick beside share this folder you can leave the default name or you can add your own share name and then you want to click on permissions to set the permissions for the shared folder remember shared permissions only come into play if the resource is over the network and not locally on the computer here are the share permissions full control change and read by default the everyone group has read permissions for the share folder so that's the default setting let's explore the share permissions you have the full control for this permission the user is able to read change edit permissions and also take ownership of files that means that he can change the permissions on the file and if you can change permissions on a file then you can take ownership of that file because you can remove the permissions and you then you could put yourself as having full control then there's change if you give the user change permission on the share the user is able to read execute write delete folders and files within the share and then there is the read permission where the user is able to view the contents of the folder now what we want to do is we want to go and we want to create a share and we're going to create the share using the server manager we want to look at combining those share and ntfs permissions we talked about the ntfs permissions and if we had a person in two groups and both of those groups had different permissions what remember what we said what we what we would do is to combine those permissions together if they're ntfs permissions and the least restrictive permission is the one that would win and if we had share permissions only we would do the same thing we would combine the share permissions for the two groups and the one that would win would be the least restrictive of the two share permissions so the rule of thumb is the least restrictive of ntfs permissions or the least respect restrictive of share permissions those are the permissions that would be the effective permissions for that folder but here's another scenario. We now want to combine the share and NTFS permissions. So we're looking again at John. John is a member of group A and he's a member of group B. But group A now has both NTFS and share permissions. In our first example, group A only had NTFS permissions. But now, group A has both ntfs and share permissions because the folder is over the network and then group b now has ntfs and share permissions also so how then do we determine what is the effective permission for john well there's a rule of thumb that says that you take the ntfs permission for the two groups and you add them together and if you do that then you're going to come out with right because remember the permissions are cumulative so write and execute read and execute rather plus right will give you right permissions because this is the least restrictive here meaning that right will do the most and then you have 
on the other side the share permissions for group a and b and you have the two share permissions full control and change and if you add those together again you're going to get the least restrictive and the least restrictive here is is full control because with full control you have a lot more permission than change the same thing here with the right permission you have more permission than read and execute you can do more so when we get the results of both of these what we want to do is to combine the two results together and your effective permission is going to be the most restrictive this time and if you have right plus full control the most restrictive permission would be right so the right permission then here would be that effective permission so again if you are combining share and ntfs permissions the rule of thumb is that the most restrictive permission wins if you're only looking at ntfs permissions together then that's the least restrictive if you're only looking at share permissions together then that is also the least restrictive once you get the results of the two then you're going to add the two together and out of those two you're going to choose the most restrictive and again this is the rule of thumb for combining share and NTFS permissions. We are going to create a shared folder using the server manager console. And within the server manager console, we want to click on file and storage services. Now we're going to click on shares. We're going to click the down arrow to the right of task and click on new share. We want to look at the different types of shares. The first share that we have here is the SMB share, and that's a quick share. And that is the fastest way to create a share. And this is typically used to share files within Windows based computers. And SMB is the protocol used for file sharing in Windows Server Message Block. Then below that, we have SMB Share Advanced. Let's click on that one. And if you are using this type of file share, it gives you access to more things like um, quotas and file screens. But you can only use that role if you have the file server resource manager installed. Then you have the SMB share applications. And this, this profile creates a file share with settings appropriate for Hyper-V and certain databases and other server applications. You have the network file share, and this is used for shares with Unix based computers. And then you have the network file share advanced, which also gives you a lot more options than the NFS share quick. And again, this is used for Unix shares. We're going to go back up and we're going to click on SMB share quick, because that's the one that we want to use. Then we're going to click on next. And we are going to choose where we want our share location to be. We have two drives here, C and E. We are going to click on the E drive. And then we're going to click on Next. And we want to type the name of the folder that we want to share. And we're going to give the folder name Sales Data. And we're going to press Enter. And you can see here the local path to the share and this is the remote path to the share with the server name slash sales data you can also put a share description here in the share description box 
Let's see if we want to click on next. And we have some options here. Enable access based enumeration. We're going to check that option because we want the user to only be able to see the files and folders that he or she has been given permission to access. So enabling access based enumeration is going to allow that user, whoever user or group you give permission to for the folder to only see the files and folders that he or she has permission to access. Then there is the allow caching of share, and that's there by default. And that makes the contents of the shares available to offline users. Next, we're going to click on next. And these are the built-in permissions for that share. So we already have system permissions or built-in permissions for the share. We want to customize the permission. So we're going to click on customize. And we want to add, click on add. And we want to select the principal. This is the user or group that we're going to give permission to access the share. So we're going to click select a principal. And we're going to use Ben Smith. So we're going to type Ben Smith name, Ben Smith. Press enter. And then we can say OK. We want to give Ben Smith modify permission. This is the NTFS permission here, so we're going to click on Modify. Then we want to click on OK. And we can see here that Ben Smith has modified permission. We're going to click on Apply and OK. Then to continue, you want to click on Next. And you now can look at the settings that you have done and confirm that they are right. And then to create the share, you want to click on Create. And close. This is the end of this demonstration. Thank you for listening to this session.